Hello everybody, we're going to be doing some thermodynamics today and yeah, let's just get right into it. So this is a poem from the Calda Thermodynamics handout. If you guys don't know, John Calda is an Estonian physicist and he's very involved with physics olympiads. He writes for many competitions and most importantly, he has these um, handouts that everybody uses um, to study for olympiads and they're used by literally everybody who does competition physics and so this is um, problem three from the Calvo Thermodynamics handout and let's go okay the problem the filament of a halogen lamp has length L equals 5 centimeters and is made of tungsten at the working temperature of the lamp T sub 0 is equal to 3200 degrees celsius the density of tungsten rho equals 18200 kilograms per meters cubed. The specific heat is C equals 235 joules per Kelvin per kilogram. And the resistivity is rho sub L is equal to 9.95 times 10 to the negative 7 ohm meters. When a voltage of rectangular waveform as shown in the graph is applied to the leads of the lamp, the temperature of the filament will reach the nominal temperature, T sub zero strictly speaking, this is the average temperature. The interior regions of the filaments are slightly hotter. However, due to voltage oscillations, there are small oscillations of the filament's temperature. Find the amplitude of these oscillations. So, let's first think about why it's going to, these, the temperature is going to oscillate. Well, we know it's going to oscillate because the film tells us to, but why? Um, so, we know it's being heated in this phase here. We know it's being heated. And then it's being, well, what's happening here? If, if it's just only being heated in here, the temperature would just continue, continually rise. That means for oscillations to occur, it has to be cooled down here. And that makes sense because the room the room it's in is probably at a different temperature and it's going to cool down when the voltage isn't supplying this power here. I don't know why I put a C. But anyway, so it's going to be losing power here. Let's, let's call the... Let's call that piece of L um, heat loss power. And then we're going we're gonna to let P equal the, the power from the battery or whatever the EMF is from. And that's going to be use of 1 squared over R, where R is the resistance of this lamp here. And well, we know this because it's just a formula. And so what needs to occur is the exact same amount of heat has to be gained during this segment as is lost during this segment. Because otherwise, the temperature would continually increase or continually decrease. So the same amount of power has to be lost and, um, lost and also um, gained. So how much heat is gained during this segment here? So heat gained is P minus, we know the heat loss is still occurring. Sorry, I didn't explain this. The heat loss is occurring during this segment here, but it's also occurring during this segment here because it wouldn't make sense to suddenly not start losing losing power just because it's being heated. You can imagine if you have like an electric kettle, it's still losing heat to the environment. That's why you feel that it's hot because the heat is coming to you. So P minus P sub L times 0 0.5 T has to be equal to P sub L times 0 0.5 T. So this gives us directly P sub L is equal to P over 2. So now we know the rate at which heat is being lost here and heat is being lost here. So the net heating power during this segment, the net heating power is what we're going to call P prime is equal to P minus P sub L is equal to P over 2. So now let's think about how the temperature actually oscillates. So it's just going to be at the lowest, let's just say it's at the lowest temperature here and it's being heated because power is being added, right? And it's going to increase, it's going to increase. I don't know why I made it exponential, but and then it's going to continually increase and then it reaches this point here and that's when it starts to decrease right because suddenly the heat is turned off it's going to decrease it's going to decrease 
and it's going to decrease as much as it can until it reaches the minimum here when it's going to start to be heated again. So this is kind of how, oops, it's kind of how it's going to oscillate. Okay, and then it's going to go to a minimum here and then go like that again. So basically we want to find, oh yeah, I just overlaid the graph on here. It doesn't mean anything about the values. We, don't, we want to find this amplitude here and we can think about it. Um, we can think about when the average amp, average temperature occurs. It's going to occur at these intervals here. Why? Because the amount of heat gained during this time is going to be equal to the amount of heat lost here. So it's going to come back to the average temperature. And this is at 0 0.25 T, 0 0.75 T, etc. So to find this heat gain here, we just need to multiply um, the heat gain when it, until it reaches its maximum temperature from the average temperature is going to be T prime times T. I'm going to use a little t for time, t over 4. So that's going to be the amount of heat gained. And to find the net, um, to find the change in temperature, we can equate this to mc delta t, since that's the equation, q equals mc delta t. So all we have left here is some unknowns. This resistance here, which gives us p prime, we don't know yet. And we don't know this mass. But we can actually just find those easily based on these values given here. And we know R is equal to rho times L over A. This is also just a, uh, well, yeah, you can think of it as a formula. And for this mass here, we know mass is equal to density, and this is electrical resistivity, by the way, and density times volume. And based and we have an area here, so we want to change this in terms of that. This could be rho times A times L. So let's plug these in here. And we have u sub 1 squared over 2, since it's 2R, times rho L, L, A, times T over 4, is equal to rho A, L times C delta T. So we have everything here we can solve because we're given most of this information here. We can cancel the areas, which we actually did not have, and now let's solve for delta T. So this gives us delta T is equal to U sub 1 squared times T over, sorry, I'm writing slanted here, 8. Rho L, Rho L squared times 8 Rho L, Rho L squared times C. And we just need to plug in our values for this one here. And once we plug in the values, we should come up with a value of 34 degrees Celsius. And that's it. Thanks for watching.